Hello, my beautiful Life Brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 3, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. So without further ado, let's get into it. Y'all, we are on episode three, and all 14 queens are finally together. But before we get into the episode, what do you think of this look? Last episode, I was making so much fun of a mandatory meeting for her awful purple paint. And so I decided, you know what, before making fun of a queen, let me see if I can do any better. What do you think of this mug? Is she giving or is she a drab? Let me know in the comments down below. But enough about me, let's get into the episode. This week, we are having a ball. We are not having a regular ball. We are having a mother ball. That is right, all three looks are inspired by mothers. The first category is Mother Goose, where the queens must give us their best look inspired by a nursery rhyme or story book. Second category is Significant Mother. Give us your best interpretation of the most famous celebrity mother you know. And the third look, is Mother Father Eleganza. The queens must create the third look in the workroom using men's clothing. So buckle in because we got 42 looks to get into. We will be looking at them queen per queen, showing you all three looks from one queen before moving on to the next. First up, we have Geneva Carr, and for her Mother Goose attire, she is going with Miss Muffet. She's got this baby pink leotard with this big poofy skirt and this big poofy hat. She's paired it with this curly hair, and she's definitely giving you your little Miss Muffet on a tuffet fantasy. Now, I will say that the bodysuit itself is quite simple, quite plain, but because she's got a lot going on with the skirt, it is sort of working for me. The hat, I think, is a little bit much. It kind of feels a little bit droopy and not elevated enough. I wish it was taller, bigger, giving you more of a fashion moment as opposed to like this sort of basic moment. And because of the hat, the hair kind of just feels droopy and unstyled and is really not giving. Personally, what I would have done, big blonde bombshell hair with like the tiniest little hat to give you this, sort of this avant-garde moment. And I think that the bodysuit itself, I think it could have used a little more ruffles or something to just excite it a little. All in all, this is kind of middle of the road and I can go either way, but I'll give it a soft fab. For the significant mother category, Geneva Carr is coming in as Selma Hayek. Now, did I get that this was Selma Hayek? Absolutely not. It was definitely not reading Selma Hayek. But the gown itself looks great. I love all of the details, all of the flowers, all of the, the jewels on it. Then when they flashed a picture of Selma Hayek next to her, I was like, okay, I definitely see it now. I understand where she was going with it. I also love that she went with a Spanish mother because she is from Mexico and she's definitely giving you Latina vibes in all of her drag. And this is no different. This is very on brand for Geneva Carr. And that is why for Geneva Carr, I'm gonna have to go with a Fab. For her mother-father look, Geneva Carr is coming in in this baby blue bodysuit with this army green detailing. The army green detailing definitely comes from some of the male clothing that was there. While the baby blue bodysuit was clearly constructed with some stretch fabric. Now the good thing about stretch fabric is that it is the easiest thing to sew with and is what most drag queens use to make their garments. So. She's probably not the best seamstress is gonna be my guess because she thought to herself, let me get the easiest fabric to work with, which I think is smart. Play to your strengths at the end of the day. She put enough of the men's clothing in there to give you the challenge. Now, the problem I have is that I actually don't like these two colors together. I feel like they're really clashing. The top detailing definitely gives you army, and I wish it would have maybe went with a brown or a dark green or even a black to kind of like give you that army fantasy. 
or she should have stuck with the baby blue and then found the same color pieces in maybe like a blue velvet. I think that that would have definitely added additional layers to it. But right now it is neither here nor there and it's kind of in between and it is not giving what she thinks it's giving. I think it's quite basic and I don't mean basic in the actual garment. The garment is okay. Uh, it's basic in concept and since it didn't have a concept it couldn't land anywhere and since it couldn't land anywhere it is getting a drab from me. <laughs> Next up we have Dawn and Dawn for her mother goose attire is giving us Cushy Cow. Now I don't know who Cushy Cow is, this is not a nursery rhyme I know, but she's coming in in this whole cow attire with the horns and the ears, but it's giving you like this sort of like elegant cow with this red dress. The best part of this outfit is her hooves. She's coming in and wearing these sort of like hoof shoe things and it's definitely giving you cow from head to toe. I think that this works really well for Dawn's drag aesthetic because her face and makeup kind of give you this like kooky personality. Even though I don't know who this character is, I think this is pretty well done from head to toe. And that is why for Miss Dawn, I'm gonna have to go with a Bob. For the significant mother category, Dawn is coming out as Audrey Hepburn. I will say that the problem with a ball is that you don't really have time to change up the makeup. And this is Dawn's standard makeup face. And considering the other two outfits, I understand why she has it. But for Audrey Hepburn, this makeup does not work. But I think that this is more uh, circumstantial based on what's happening because of the ball. So I'm very curious to see what she would have done had it been a photo shoot. So I'm gonna keep my eyes open for Instagram and see what she posts there. But enough about her makeup, let's get into the look. I will say that Audrey Hepburn, it's hard to do her wrong, but it's also not as hard to make her exciting. We saw this on Trageis Belgique where they had a whole runway that was Night of a Thousand Audrey Hepburns and it kind of felt repetitive. Does she look fine in this outfit? Yes, but she is lucky that this was a ball because she has two more looks. Because as if this was an individual runway, this would not be enough. It is elegant but simple and I need more. This is drag. Um, and that is why for this one, I could go either way, but I feel like she just skated by enough to get a soft fab. For Dawn's mother-father look, she's coming in as a construction worker. She's got tall boots that turn into overalls. She's got like this cape thing. It is definitely giving me reminiscence of Shea Coulee's design challenge from her season. But even though it reminds me of that, I feel like it is done in a new Dawn way. And I love that I'm already saying a Dawn way because Dawn is really coming out and saying, I have a signature, I have this weird aesthetic, and I'm already getting who this queen is, and I'm loving this queen. The outfit is well made, well put together. You can see this queen knows how to sew. It is both like avant-garde and fashion at the same time, and it is 100% gonna be a fab. Next up is Hershey Le Courgette. And Hershey Le Courgette for her mother goose outfit is coming out as Bernie B. I have no idea who Bernie B is. Guys, what, why is it that I'm not getting any of these storybook references? Like, what is going on? But re regardless, she looks stunning. She is giving you Queen Bee fantasy. She is giving you a little bit of Beyonce. She is giving you rich she is giving you black and yellow realness. It kind of also reminded me a little bit of Janie Jacquet on Drag Race Holland, but it looks so good. It looks expensive. It's this black and yellow latex with this fur moment and this like little curvy pussycat wig. Honestly, oh my God, this is fantastic. I love it. And for this look, it is definitely gonna be a bop. And Hershey Le Courgette for her significant mother outfit is coming in as Mother Nature. I thought this was so smart to go with Mother Nature as opposed to a different celebrity. I thought this was a unique spin and twist on it. The problem is, is I didn't get that this was Mother Nature. Unless they told me Mother Nature, I was like, huh? Mother Earth maybe? Mother Nature to me is all about like leaves and florals and trees and this is definitely giving you like 
earth. So maybe she was more mother earth and not mother nature. But let's talk about the dress itself. First of all, it's another latex dress. I love latex, so I'm never going to complain about that. But I feel like, especially coming off of her last look, this feels so flat. On top of it, she's paired it with this like really basic hair. If you were going to do this like earth thing, imagine like a big updo with like a globe in the middle of it or, you know, flowers coming out of her hair or grass coming out of her hair. I feel like she could have gone with so many hairstyles and she gave us this basic wig. Ugh. This was just not it for me. All in all, this was a miss. And that is why for Hershey Lacour Jeté's significant mother look, it is gonna be a drab. For her mother-father look, Hershey Lacour Jeté is coming in in this uh, seafoam pantsuit type of thing. It's, it's definitely reading, I'm going shopping at the mall. It's definitely not giving fashion. It's definitely giving you, it feels like she, took the clothes that were already there and just did a little something to them. And we find out later that is exactly what she did. She literally took pants and added a couple of things to it and kept them as pants. This is a transformation challenge. We saw this on Canada's Drag Race with Melinda Verga. You need to transform the outfit. And she did it. On top of it, it doesn't even look good. So I don't know why she would even choose this. I feel like there's so many ways she can go. And I think that she just got like stuck in her head. Probably sewing is not her forte. And with all the pressures of the challenge and missing home and not knowing what to do, she just fumbled and fumbled hard. And that is why I have to give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Mirage. And Mirage for her mother goose attire is giving us Ba Ba Black Sheep. Now this is a storybook I understand and this is one that I actually got the reference to. She's coming in in this sort of valley girl black sheep vibe. She's got the big ears, the black eyes, and this sort of like sexy two-piece fur black sheep look. I kind of love this. It does give me a little bit sexy Halloween costume, but Mirage loves to be sexy, so I wouldn't expect anything else from her. It definitely looks well put together and it definitely looks on brand for her. And that is why for Mirage, I'm gonna have to go with a Bam. Mirage for her significant mother category is coming in as La Llorona. I don't even know if I'm saying that right because I don't know who that is. I hope that didn't say anything that was scandalous. But I will say that I do like this sort of hair fantasy that's covering different pieces of her body. It's definitely giving you Mirage, which is always that like sexy vixen girl. The problem I have is with the bodysuit itself. I find that the colors don't really match her skin tone 100% and you can tell that it's a bodysuit. And the person who did the airbrushing feels like it was a little bit rushed. It doesn't really give you Wumana. It definitely gives you bodysuit that's painted. I feel like this had a lot of potential, but it kind of hit missed the mark for me. Love the concept, love the makeup, love everything else except for the bodysuit and since this is a design challenge the bodysuit matters and that is why for Mirage's second look I'm gonna have to go with a drab. For Mirage's third look that she constructed in the workroom she's coming in in this sort of deconstructed army green Rambo vibes. Now she was struggling so much throughout this competition so I was fully expecting this to be a fail but I think she turned it around. It's definitely giving you body oddy. It's definitely giving you very little clothing. Um, and if it was some other queen like myself, it would not work. But on Mirage, she's got the body to pull it off. It also fits her aesthetic, which is like this sexy bombshell. On top of it, she was smart and she, you know, painted a black eye on her to help with the storytelling. And I think that that really helped elevate the look because you got it immediately. And when an outfit is basic, you have to get it. Now, once you start looking at it, you realize it's maybe not as basic as you might initially think. It's definitely got some details in some of those straps and some strategic holes put into it. All in all, I think this turned out pretty good. For someone who doesn't know how to sew and who was struggling, I think she did a pretty good job. All in all, I'm gonna have to go with a bop.
Next up, we have Megami, and Megami is coming out as Little Bo Peep. She's giving you sort of like this deconstructed version of Little Bo Peep, which I think is quite interesting and avant-garde. Start seeing like the little pieces next to her, but I'm, I'm missing a little bit of that story. Why is Little Bo Peep in this like weird, tussled, grunge fantasy? It, it's just like not hitting all the way. But I will say that the outfit looks very well made, very well put together, and I like that it's going in a different direction. She could have easily done like super pretty, cutesy, and she decided not to. The part though that I don't like with this look is the makeup. Ooh, it's bad. Like it's just too clownish. I wish she would have, you know, put that grunge fantasy into her makeup or just kept like a beautiful face. This is a little bit neither here nor there, but honestly, the makeup is the only thing I don't like with this look. Everything else is great, and that is why for Megami's Little Bo Peep look, it is gonna be a bop. For the significant mother runway, we have Megami is coming out as mother monster herself, Lady Gaga. Oh my God, I love that she thought mother, mother monster, Lady Gaga. She said, I'm gonna give you the queen. I'm gonna outdo some of the previous mothers we had from season, I'm gonna redo the season nine runway in my own way. She's giving you telephone music video and it is definitely conceptual and cool. This looks so expensive and I love this look. The other thing that I love about this look is that you know she's gonna use this look again. She's gonna use this look again anytime she performs Gaga in a show and I wanna be there when she does. That is why Megami is definitely gonna get a bow from me on this one. For her third look that was constructed in the workroom, Megami is giving us construction worker. She's got this denim dress and she's paired it with this like red bandana, blue coat, and the construction belt. She's definitely giving you strong woman. She's giving you a lesbian. I'm gonna build something for you. All in all, this looks very well put together and very original. You know, she said construction worker and this could have been very much a flop, but she definitely put the chic into construction worker wherever that came from. It is definitely feeling drag and it is definitely feeling real at the same time. And it's definitely feeling like powerful in a way. All in all, this is well thought through, well conceptualized. And for Megami's third look, I'm definitely gonna have to go with it. Uh Next up, it's a mandatory meeting. And a mandatory meeting for her mother goose attire is coming out as Little Pussy. Now, I have no idea who Little Pussy is. I don't even know which nursery rhyme it's from. So I was a little bit lost with this. I'm assuming Little Pussy is a cat. And if she's a cat, why is she this girl with some dead cats on her? It threw me off. But because I don't actually know the character, I'm not gonna criticize her stylistic choices. I'm gonna just look at the garment of itself. And the garment itself looks pretty decent. So we know that a mandatory meeting is not necessarily your fashion queen, but I think this one is pretty decent. It is definitely giving you concept. It is definitely giving you storybook. She's got this whole like story on stage about these dead cats. Is it the most fashionable, innovative look ever? No, but is it awful? Also, no. I think that she is very much a safe queen with this look and that is why I'm gonna give her a safe response and give her a soft bow. For her significant mother look, a mandatory meeting is coming out as old school Michelle Visage with some of the iconic leopard print stuff boss necklace and big boobs and big hair. The way we originally knew Michelle Massage from seasons one through 10. I will say that this was smart because everybody knows who Michelle Massage is and she's had some kind of iconic looks. But wait, she's not finished. She pulls it off and reveals that she has a mastectomy, it has the gray hair, and she is now new school Michelle Massage. I think this is so smart because everybody on Drag Race knows Michelle. I think it also plays to the audience and plays to the judges. Do I think the outfit was well made? No. I felt like the first dress, although all the elements were there to scream Michelle Massage with the necklace and the leopard print and the big boobs, it felt clunky. It just didn't feel finished. When she pulls it off, she comes with this like slick dress, which feels almost too simple and almost too reductive. All in all, this was like, eh, not 100% there for me. I really want to give her a fab, but I'm going to have to go with a soft drab. For her third look, a mandatory meeting 
constructed this I am an office lady going to the beach she's got like this gray pencil skirt with this sort of gray vest paired with a lot of tropical fabric it definitely feels like she took up some clothes and cut them together to create a look. This was not doing it for me. I'm really curious how much of it was actually constructed because it feels like that pencil skirt was probably existing and she added stuff to it. She probably took a jacket and cut off the sleeves. I mean, she did what she had to do, but it was kind of middle of the road. Was it the worst? No. Was it the best? No. Am I gonna fab it? No. It is gonna get a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Morphine Love Dion, and Morphine is coming out as a man and a maid. Again, no idea who this storybook is, but she looks sexy AF. She's coming in in this latex maid's outfit. She is oozing sex from all of her orifices. She's definitely giving you that I know I'm the fantasy that Morphine loves to give. I love this outfit from head to toe. It is definitely giving what it's meant to give and it probably has nothing to do with the storybook but I don't care because she looks good and that is why for Morphine Love Dion's storybook outfit it is definitely going to be a fab. For the significant mother category Morphine Love Dion is coming in as Chris Jenner and honestly you knew that that was Chris Jenner the moment she came out but she's doing it in her Morphine Love Dion way which is making it a little bit sexy so not only is she giving you like that basic blazer she's showing a little bit cleavage but she's giving you like that signature hair and the signature suit that makes it read 100%. If there was one little critique I wish it was that her glasses had all of the rhinestones on it because Chris Jenner is known for wearing like super rhinestone -y glasses but that is a small detail. Is it the most over the top look? No, but it does a good job and she put her own spin on it. And that is why for Morphine Loves Dion's second look, it is gonna be a fab from me. For her third mother father look, Morphine Love Dion is coming out in this denim dress. My initial thought was Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake vibes, but it could also be giving you Candy Muse. All in all, I think this was really good. Denim is a hard material to work with, so I definitely have to applaud her for creating this out of denim because she's also giving her her signature sexy morphine body oddy oddy vibe. The part that throws me off is the hat. I feel like she didn't necessarily need to create that, but I'm going to assume she finished early and thought that she didn't do enough so she created the hat. If there was one thing I would change is to probably rhinestone a bunch of the outfits, but I don't know if they gave them rhinestones in the workroom, but it would have definitely aided to bring it up a notch. I think that she could, honestly, if she rhinestone this, she could wear this to the club and she, and everybody would think she is a honestly. Honestly, work, girl. So if you haven't guessed, for Morphine Loves Dion's third look it is gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Maya Iman LePage. And Maya Iman LePage for her storybook Mother Goose outfit is giving us Mary Canary. She's coming out in this yellow gown with these yellow feathers and yellow hair. I will say that this, I think, is a strong choice of character for Maya Iman because this yellow looks so good on her. You know, in the last episode, she was wearing this dazzly thing that was yellow also but it was like a pale shade and it wasn't really popping this pops it gives you canary it gives you canary with also the feathers and it also gives you canary because of the color so it is like layered and it does look elegant the issue i have with it is that her feathers are blocking her face there is too many feathers or they're too high. It just really detracts from everything. The gown looks good and she potentially looks good, but I can't see her. And that frustrates me so, so much. And because I cannot see her, I cannot critique it properly. And if I can't critique it properly, that means it is no good. And that's why for Maya Iman LePage's canary outfit, it is definitely gonna have to be a drag. For her significant mother look, Maya Iman LePage is coming out as little Kim. Now I will say, thank God they put that 
picture on the side because I did not get Little Kim at all. I didn't get the reference. And I was also find it strange that this is who she would have chose as a mother. Now let's talk about the outfit. Once I see the picture and I see it side by side, I get all of the points. I get where she was going with it. But the thing is, is that the judges don't see it side by side. They just have to go with what they're looking at on stage. And when I'm looking at it on stage, I didn't get Little Kim. I also got Missy Elliott and Michelle Visage said the same thing. If you were gonna go with Little Kim, I wish she would've went with something a little bit more iconically Little Kim, like that one time she did that pasty in that pale blue, that would've read more Little Kim. This just feels like it could've been Cardi B, it could've been Missy Elliott, it could've been any rapstress, to be honest. And on top of it, once you start looking at the fashion, it looks like a bunch of pieces put together. It doesn't feel like a complete look. And this is the sort of drag you would see at a bar, at a club, and sort of what every queen does is find pieces and turn it into drag. But this is RuPaul's Drag Race. This is the main stage. This is season 16. We are expecting more. We are expecting custom looks and expensive attires. And this isn't that. Now, the question is, do I fab it or do I drab it? Well, if you hadn't guessed, I'm going to go with a drab on this one. For my Imani LaPage's third look, she's coming out as this rocker chick fantasy. She's got all of the plaid. She's paired it with this safety pin in her nose. And she's got all of the attitude. The one thing I will say is that all three looks from Maya Iman LePage have been very different from one another, so she's definitely giving you layers. Now, the judges said that this outfit was giving you very off the rack, which I can kind of understand why they say that, but honestly, I kind of like it. A construction challenge is very difficult, so if you are getting to a point where people think you bought it, I think that that's a win in my books. I think that where she lost some of it is with some of the accessorizing, such as the belt, which could have definitely been lost. I think she should have taken that rock and roll safety pin idea and taken it to the next level. I wish she, like, had she put a whole bunch of safety pins everywhere, maybe some studs, and put some holes in it, I think it would have just elevated it and brought it up to the next level. But all in all, it's pretty good, and I'm gonna have to go with a belt. Next up, we have Q, and Q for her storybook Mother Goose outfit is coming in as the man in the moon. Not only is she the man in the moon, she's the man and the moon. This is giving me whimsy from head to toe. She's got this big half moon head filled with crystals and rhinestone details. She's got this beautiful bodysuit, and it literally looks like it came straight out of a storybook. This looks expensive AF, and is definitely giving everything. From head to toe, this is magnificent. It feels like it costs thousands of dollars, and to think she even makes all of her own costumes. Crazy, crazy talented, this queen. All in all, there is absolutely nothing I can say for this outfit, except fab, 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 fab. For her significant mother category, Q is coming in as mama, mother to Liza Minnelli, Miss Judy Garland. Now I will say that I love that Q went in a different direction. This feels so different from her last look, which I love, but it's also got Q's like signature aesthetic onto it with this really expensive gown. The gown itself is got filled with jewels and these flowers. Now I'm not a big Judy Garland fan, so I didn't get the reference initially, but once you see the picture, it just works. Even if you don't get the reference, you can still appreciate how well made this garment is. And you understood that she was someone from old Hollywood. When I look at the garment, I actually think that Q's outfit is better than Judy Garland's to be honest. And that says so much about Q and her aesthetic and Q's uh, abilities. All in all, this is freaking fantastic. And that is why for Q's second look, it is definitely gonna be a fab. For her third look, Q is coming out in this black and white patchwork look. You can tell Q knows how to sew. This look is better than some queens looks that they brought. And to think that she constructed this in the workroom. Now I will say as fabulous as the dress is, there is no concept or story there. It is just like a beautiful dress for the sake of being a beautiful dress. But at the end of the day, it is a beautiful dress and it is 
freaking well made. I love the styling in it, I love the attitude in it, and I love that it is again different from what she's done in the other two looks. So Q is definitely coming out and saying like, I'm gonna be a front runner in this, having won episode one, and now coming in with this on episode two. All in all, I think this was very well made, and that is why for Q's third look, it is gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Nymphia Wynn. And Nymphia Wynn for her Mother Goose storybook outfit is coming in as Little Boy Blue. Nymphia definitely took a different take on this and is giving you more boy drag, drag king, androgyny sort of vibes. I will say that the outfit itself looks expensive and looks really well made. It definitely feels like it comes out of a storybook. The thing is, is that it is definitely giving you character but it is not necessarily giving you like female drag and I'm okay with people bending the lines a little bit, but this one wasn't hitting for me. I feel like the concept should have been bigger. She's definitely giving you like that Rococo male aesthetic, but I would want it to be a little bit more female. I actually think she could have used more blue. She could have painted her whole face blue. She could have done blue hair. I think the costume itself is, is great, but maybe like she has a skirt that pulls off and then becomes a boy. I feel like it could have done another level. And maybe this is because I'm expecting so much for Nymphia Wynn because her first week was so amazing that this one felt a little bit flat to me. Is it bad? Absolutely not. Is it my favorite? Also absolutely not. Is it bad enough to get a drab? No, it is actually really good. Is it bad enough to get a drab? No, it is actually pretty well done. And, and that is why I have to give her a bab. Nymphia wins second look. She is coming in as Angelina Jolie. Now I will say I did not get this reference initially. Apparently she is Angelina Jolie at her wedding. I wish she would have given us more cues that this was Angelina Jolie. For example, in the sketch, Angelina Jolie has like this black hair and that's what Angelina Jolie is known for as well. So I wish she would have done that with the hair. But let's talk about the look. This looks good. Even if you don't get the reference, it's a very elegant white dress so you kind of got that it was wedding initially it's got a lot of sculptural pieces all the drawings on the back if you don't know angelina jolie that was kind of like an iconic moment that she did it was very unique to her so i think that that was super intelligent to integrate it i just feel like this look feels very taiwanese comparative to angelina jolie you can see that she was trying to put her spin on it. I think she put too much of her spin on it, to be honest. And that's why it didn't read as Angelina Jolie. But does Nymphia Wynn look good? Yeah, she looks damn good. And, and because she looks damn good, I have to, have to, have to give her a fab. For Nymphia Wynn's third outfit, she is coming in as the Thai fantasy. She's got all of these like squiggly ties coming from her neck, from her head, from her waist and she's paired it with like this brown leather skirt thing and she looks so good and so expensive. I don't even know how she has thought about this. She took like one of the most basic materials which were ties and I thought, ooh, where is this gonna go? But man, did she ever turn this out? This is what I love about Nymphia. She's got her own aesthetic, her own vibe, her own way of thinking and this is just fantastic. She is definitely giving you ties, 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 and I'm gonna give her a fab, fab, fab. Next up, we have Safira Cristal. And Safira Cristal, for her Mother Goose look, is coming in as Peter, Peter, Pumpkin Eater. But she is not going for that androgyny boy look. She is definitely gonna give you concept, and she said, Peter ate that pumpkin and now he is the pumpkin. She's got this giant pumpkin where she is the stem coming out of it. It's giving you storybook character and it's giving you whimsy. I don't know how she packed this giant pumpkin. I would love to see how that folds up and fits into a luggage because she probably needed a luggage just for this look. The one thing I will say is that the Outfit is so big that I was expecting her to pop out of it and give us a second sort of reveal. But maybe she had that reveal and she was just saving it for a lip sync had she gone in the bottom. But this is not bottom worthy in any way. And that is why it is definitely gonna be a ah. For her second look, Safira Cristal is coming in as the original mother, Miss Eve. She's coming in in this sequence nude bodysuit covering herself with the leaves 
just like Eve did in The Secret Garden. This looks so expensive and so real. Like, remember when I was saying for Mirage, the bodysuit just wasn't giving you body? This is giving you body. The airbrush is so well done. The skin tone match is so well done. On top of it, she made it drag by putting crystals all over it. And she looks regal. She looks expensive. And she looks like the Black Eve. And I love this look. And that is why for Sephira Crystal's second look, it is 100% gonna be a fab. For Sophia's mother-father look where she constructed in the workroom, she is also giving you construction worker. She did, said she is giving you Roberta the construction worker. Ooh. When she came out, I didn't necessarily get construction worker. I definitely got more like teacher vibes with the plaid was giving me a little bit of that clueless. But then she pulled out a screwdriver and she she threw me off a little bit. But once you start looking at the outfit, the outfit is actually pretty decent. But was it working for me? No. I saw right through it. I thought this was a little bit of a miss. Actually, a lot of a miss. And that's why I'm going to give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Plain Jane. And Plain Jane, for her Mother Goose look, is coming out as Pussycat by the Fire. She is coming in as a cat face with cat ears, smoking her little cigarette in this, like, 1920s gown. Is giving you both old Hollywood and storybook and cat all at the same time. This looks thought through, looks put together. And in case you didn't know she was a cat, she did like sort of this prosthetic nose thing. This looks so thought through, so put together, and is really giving you concept from head to toe. This is sort of what I was expecting from a mandatory meeting when she was also supposed to be a cat, but she wasn't a cat. This is giving you both fashion and whimsy and is really intelligent and that is why for miss plain jane for her storybook look it is definitely gonna be a fab for the significant mother category plain jane is coming in as octo mom she's coming in in her nurse clothing gown thing and holding all of her seven babies but where is the eighth the eighth just pops out right out of her. She hobbles around and lets go of her babies only to realize her babies are a boa. Clearly, Plenty Jane loves children. I will say that this was a little bit of a miss for me. I like that she went with Octomom and she definitely tried to make that doctor's gown more elegant with all of the sequins. But I was expecting a reveal to happen to for her to pull it off and something was going to be underneath just to give us a little bit more of that story. I also wish as Octomom, one of the things iconic about her was that she was huge when she was pregnant because she had eight babies. So I almost wish she would have come out with like a pregnant Octomom and then pulled off her nightgown to give you all of the babies. I felt like there was more story that could have been added or something else that could have been done. This was kind of fine, kind of middle of the road. I don't know, I can go either way. And because I can go either way, I feel like I haven't drabbed enough queens and that is why I'm gonna give her a soft drab. For her third look, which she constructed in the workroom, Plain Jane is coming out as this like deconstructed businesswoman. She said that she created this from one outfit where she just cut it up and created this new look. And honestly, it looks like that's exactly what she did. I felt like this was a miss. I felt like there's so much more that could have been added to it. Maybe some details, some finishing touches, and maybe some more fabric. I say that because she is definitely relying on the body. But I guess that's what you do when you don't know how to sew. The good thing is, is that Plain Jane is a beautiful queen, so she can sort of rely on the body. But was it working for me? No. I saw right through it. I thought this was a little bit of a miss, actually a lot of a miss, and that's why I'm gonna give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Tsunami Muse, and Tsunami Muse is coming in as Humpty Dumpty. When they said nursery rhyme storybook, I was hoping somebody was gonna do Humpty Dumpty because that was probably what I would have done. So when I saw Tsunami Muse come out as a giant egg, I was so disappointed. Humpty Dumpty, she could have done anything and she's got this giant egg and she just looks 
awful in this egg. But thankfully, she gets to the runway and she pulls it off to come out as the broken inside egg in this in this sexy egg outfit. I think that the dress underneath was better than the egg on the outside. So I'm like, yes, thank God. But let's talk about it. I will say that the dress itself is good, but I don't really love this hair headpiece with it. I wish it was something else. It just kind of feels flat. And I do think that the egg on the outside could have been more. We saw with Nymphia wins Banana the following week where she did all of those sort of details, that sort of Fabergé idea on it. Imagine this being a giant Fabergé egg and then she breaks open. I feel like it could have used a few extra layers. On top of it, the dress itself, I wish it was made out of latex, something a little bit more chunkier and expensive looking. It definitely feels thin and maybe it's just not reading on the camera. All in all, I feel like this is sort of middle of the road. It is not amazing, but it's not bad either. But considering the looks that we've been seeing, I'm gonna have to go with a soft drab, mainly because of the outside. Tsunami Muse for her significant mother category is coming in as her drag mother, Miss Candy Muse. She recreated the iconic entrance look from Sandy with this jean jacket material and is holding the original boombox. I think this is so smart. First of all, everybody knows who Candy Muse is. Second of all, she probably used the same designer because this looks so well to put together. If they weren't different sizes, I would have thought it was the exact same gown. It is so well done. On top of it, can't you imagine them going on tour and both wearing these looks? It would be so iconic. I love the referential styling. I love how well made it was. I love that she's giving Candy a shout out. And that is why for Tsunami News, I'm gonna have to go with a fab. For her third outfit, Tsunami Muse is coming in as this schoolgirl fantasy. She's got the little collar with the little tie, the little plaid skirt, and the argyle socks. It's definitely giving me a little bit of that Britney Spears, oops, I did it again. And it's definitely reading schoolgirl. I think that this is so well thought through and so smart because you understood the concept right away. Tsunami says that she doesn't even sew and this was all done with a glue gun. And that just goes to show that girl, you can do anything. I'm really impressed that she was able to get such a quality gown from a glue gun. All in all, I think this was a win. Was it the best one there? And no, it's not Q level. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not Q level, but it is definitely well thought through, well put together, and you got the concept. So for Tsunami News' third outfit, I'm gonna have to go with a bow. Next up, we have Plasma. And Plasma for her Mother Goose attire is coming in as Tweedle Dee and Tweedle Dumb. First up, I will say, I think that this was an interesting interpretation of it. She decided to do both characters in this one is on top of the other attire. We've seen a lot of these, so I love that she decided to take it and make it more fashion. The problem is, is that the effect, the way she's done it, just doesn't work. It doesn't look realistic. Also, Tweedle Dee and Tweedle Dumb are supposed to be a little bit like kooky and a little bit weird and she's done it in this sort of like simple basic plaid it i guess she's trying to go for a little bit of more of that chanel look i don't know it's it's just not it for me it's not reading the way i think she thinks it's reading if it was me i would think it i think i would have kept the concept and just brought it up a few notches with some extra detailing maybe a different face on the guy or maybe a different costume on them. I'm not sure how to fix it, to be honest. All in all, not great. And that is why I'm gonna have to go with a drab. For Plasma's second look, she's coming in as Anne Boleyn. She's giving you old English regalness in this beautiful yellow color. I will say that I was expecting more. Anne Boleyn comes from luxury, she is regal, she is one of the king's wives. I would have loved it to be stoned from head to toe. This feels very plain. Yes, the fabric is a beautiful color, but I need more. This is Drag Race. And I'm just not really vibing with it. It just very middle of the road, but like middle of the road and not the best way. And that is why for her second look, Miss it is definitely gonna get a drab. For Plasma's mother-father look, she's coming out in this black and gray dress. 
It is got a whole bunch of patterns on it. It definitely feels like she took a whole bunch of fabrics, sewed them together, threw them on her and called it a dress. It's tied at the middle. I'm questioning how much sewing was put into it. I'm questioning how much taste was put into it. It is definitely not it for me. You can see she struggled in this and was trying to do anything she can to survive and survive she did, but she is lucky that this was a, she is lucky that this challenge came so early into the season. She can get lost in the mix and people bombed way worse than her, but this is by no means a top look. Actually, it is not even a fab. That is right, I'm gonna give her a drab. Oof, y'all, that is 42 looks. I tried to speed through those, but man, did we have a lot to get through. But enough about that, let's get into these fabs or drabs, because we got a bunch of those to get into as well. First, let's start off with my drab of the week. For my drab of the week, for Mother Goose, it has to go to Plasma. For the significant mother look, it has to go to Hershey Le Courgette. And for the mother-father look, it has to go to Hershey Le Courgette. Oof, that was a rough one. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positives. Who had my fab of the week for Mother Goose? Well, I'm giving that to Hershey Le Courgette. Ooh, she had some negatives, but she got some positives. And for my significant mother look, it goes to Magami. And finally, for my mother-father look, it goes to Nymphia Wind. But I will say that that is just individual looks but this is a ball, so we have to look at them as a collection. So who had my drab of the week? Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Plasma. I will say that even though Hershey Le Courgette had two of my bottoms, she also had one of my tops, and that made her just skate by, well, Miss Plasma had negative critiques all around. And for my top of the week my fab of the week has to go to miss q even though q didn't get any of my individual fabs she did get five stars on all three of her looks there was just other ones that i kind of preferred a little bit better but all of her looks were so excellent and she killed this runway that's why she had my fab 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 of the week Y'all, that is finally it. We've gone through the looks. Do you agree or disagree with my comments? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Who were your fabs? Who were your drabs? Remember, I do read all the comments and do reply. Uh, and while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week. Bye.